there's another area that I that I've been uh, really studying this year, and it's uh, it's a really important thing for us to know as investors, and that is the difference between value stocks and growth stocks. Now, just on a real high level, uh, value stocks are companies that you can buy their stock and you know that you're getting a lot of profit for every dollar that you invest in the stock. So typically you can buy uh, some of these value stocks at, let's say, 10 times earnings, which means you might pay $100 for the stock and the stock generates $10 per share of profit every single year. Some stocks are trading at five or six times earnings, which means you're getting even more value. Now, these value stocks are doing quite well this year, especially compared to growth stocks. Now, growth stocks are the exact opposite. You pay maybe 40 or 50 or 60 times earnings for these stocks, but many investors are willing to do that because they say, oh, this company is growing like crazy. And in five years, the super high price that I'm paying for this stock will actually make sense. Um, and that works really well during a bull market or during the past bull market that we had. Uh, but it's a terrible way to invest right now. And long term, it actually has been a much more risky way to invest. Well, right now we're seeing value stocks outperform uh, in comparison to growth stocks in a very big way. So I just ran the, the numbers last night. And as of yesterday's close, uh, value stocks are down 11.5 percent uh, as measured by a Vanguard ETF. Uh, and the ticker for this ETF is VTV, Victor Tango Victor. Um, and, and it's a great ETF that you can buy if you want diversified exposure into value stocks. So down 11.5%. Not great, uh, but still, gosh, so much better than the rest of the market. Meanwhile, growth stocks, as measured by another fund that Vanguard runs, the VUG, Victor Uncle George, um, Victor Uniform Golf, actually, as, as the pilots would say, uh, is down 32% on the year. So we're talking about 11.5% versus 32%, almost three times as much uh, in, in terms of losses uh, that, that, uh, that growth stocks have versus value. So I actually uh, put, posted the, the chart of these two funds next to each other on Twitter, and I would recommend you go and take a look. Uh, my Twitter handle is Zach Scheidt, uh, Z-A-C-H. Scheidt is S-C-H-E-I-D-T, all one word. Um, and yeah, I know some of some of you, and myself included, are, are a little bit turned off by social media and, and some of the conversations that happen on Twitter these days. And, and I get that, and I'm not a huge fan of Twitter as, you know, as an overall platform. But at the same time, I'm finding Twitter to be a great way of communicating stuff that I'm seeing in real time. Um, so every day I put some stuff on Twitter just to say, here's what I'm seeing in the market. Here's some some new opportunities. Uh, here Here's a conversation that I'm having with, with another trader. So if you like this Lifetime Income Report Pro call that we do every month where I get to kind of talk to you and tell you what I'm seeing, the state of the market, what's going on right now, if you like that kind of a discussion, I think you'll really like the stuff that I post on Twitter. Again, I try to put a few things up every day, charts of interest, like the uh, value versus growth stocks that we're talking about right now. Uh, key opportunities, so specific stocks, specific sectors. We've been talking a lot about the energy sector. Uh, macro insights, so whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, what's going on with interest rates, what's going on with the housing market, um, what do we see you know, in the future, this you know, real-time thoughts being put up there. Uh, I have conversations with other traders. Sometimes I put up educational threads like uh, how to handle bear markets, uh, some strategies for generating income with your, with your retirement account, uh, risk management, how to just protect your wealth during, um, during this turbulent, turbulent time. Uh, so there's no extra charge for any of this information, and I don't mean this to be a, an advertisement or anything. It's just simply I it's it's an area that I try to give uh, a, a lot of information, and I think it will help uh, as you look for ways to grow and protect your wealth. So again, Zach Scheidt on Twitter. If you follow me, please drop me a message and say hello, uh, and, and let me know what you think about uh, some of that. I, I love the interaction. I love the chance to, uh, to just get to, to share my real-time thoughts with you on that. So back to the value versus growth, um, I think that we're going to see value stocks actually lead this market when the bear market ends and when we start heading into a new bull market. And here's why. Uh, think about what happens uh, and how human, the human mind thinks about risk and, and, and 
challenges that have happened in the past. So after the dot-com crisis, which is when I got my, my start uh, in the investment business, I, I remember, I think it was April of uh, 2000. So right as all the, all the stuff was hitting the fan, uh, that's when I started learning how markets work. And I remember for years after the dot-com uh, bubble burst, People swore off technology stocks and said, I'm not going to invest in technology. I'll, you know, give me my GE and my Procter and & Gamble. And uh, those things, those things don't work. I lost too much money in them. Uh, and then after the great financial crisis, people swore off bank stocks and housing stocks. They had lost so much money in banks. They, I will never buy a bank stock again. I mean, I, I heard that not just talk people that I was talking to, but you sit in a restaurant, you hear somebody in the booth behind you saying the exact same thing. Um, People will avoid whatever they've lost money in. And now we're in a, in a situation where growth stocks have just pummeled investors. And I'm starting to hear the same things uh, from people that I'm friends with or just things from walking around in the community. I will never buy a growth stock again. I'm looking at, you know, I'm investing in McDonald's or I'm investing in Coke or I'm investing in, um, you know, Home Depot or, or, or something that's much more of a value play instead of the, the Zooms and the Pelotons and the uh, the higher growth stocks. So I think that this is something that we're going to see people moving into value stocks. They're going to avoid growth stocks for at least the next three or four years, simply because they've been hurt so hard and because it's clear that there is value in these stocks that generate reliable profits. So research actually shows that uh, there are some big mega trends when it comes to the difference between value and growth. And you have somewhere between 10 and 15 year periods where value will outperform, and then 10 or 15 year periods where growth will outperform. And it swings back and forth as investors kind of have uh, more appetite for one side or the other. And we're just coming out of a, a long period of, of great gains for growth stocks. And now growth stocks are still overpriced, even though many of these stocks have come back so far. When you look at how much they're earning or not earning, um, the, the prices for their stocks are still very risky, whereas value stocks are starting to attract more capital. They're gaining momentum, but the companies are still generating great profits. And so they're still good deals when it comes to buying uh, value stocks. So I would say as we as we start working our way through the bottom of this bear market and we look for opportunity on the other side, value stocks are where we're going to see the very best opportunities and so don't get sucked into trying to buy Peloton at the low or, you know, the, this cloud stock that's going to change the way or artificial intelligence or some of those. Um, you know, you may want to put a very small amount of your, your wealth into some of those uh, long shot areas. But the, the area of focus that I think we're going to grow our wealth the most is in these value stocks, especially as we see, you know, that, that macro trend switch and potentially another 5, 10, 15 years of value stocks outperforming. 